Hello again everyone, I am the Black Knight and this video serves as an update to my car repainting what series where I take the Pittsburgh Steelers around a track and then explain why I don't have black and yellow cars anymore. Quick side note, that little tribute to Brophy1322 took a guaranteed. lot more takes than I thought it would. Brophy, you're awesome. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, seriously, go uh, look at the Brophy1322 channel. If you're watching this video, you will love that channel. Now as a point of reference, uh, this is an update video to a previous video where I repainted my main racing cars because they're all Steelers livery, they're all black and yellow, after the Steelers refused to come out for the Star Spangled Banner. Yes, they wouldn't come out for the anthem, they, they, didn't want to, they didn't want to not kneel before the flag, they didn't want to kneel before the flag, they couldn't come up with uh, a unified front. They couldn't agree what they wanted to do with the flag, so they decided the best thing to do was stay inside. Which is boycotting the flag, and therefore, it's like they decided to all kneel, but then they didn't want to do it publicly, so they just decided to stay in, is what it looked like. Now since then, uh, there's been a letter from uh, from Mr. Rooney, the, uh, the owner of the team, who was trying to explain what they were doing, but it came off a little bit like, wow, you guys are so stupid, you didn't know what we were doing, we're just trying to avoid the politics, and um, there's a bunch of other things that have, you know, Roethlisberger's done a mea culpa, this wasn't handled well, and people took it the wrong way, and of course we weren't trying to boycott the flag. I think I know where they were coming from, like they said, well, gee, we, we don't want anything controversial to happen, so we just won't go out. But that's very flawed thinking, because not coming out to controversial action. Marquise Pouncey has come out and said, oh no, we're all standing for the flag this week. Don't you worry, everybody, 100% participation. We are gonna be standing for the flag with our hands on our hearts. Which many people are interpreting as, oh, we felt the backlash. We really don't like it. Please like us again. Sign the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is complicated by the fact that many interpret this as an anti-Trump protest as opposed to a Black Lives Matter protest. And that's enhanced by the fact that uh, the coach of the Steelers, Mike Tomlin, was a strong supporter of Hillary Clinton. That's just all the background on this. I'm just trying to, you know, in case you didn't know what was going on, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of my fans may not be into football. So, therefore, we'll just give you that little background of why I'm repainting the cars. Now, let me explain where the real damage to the Steelers came in, because the Steelers are taking a hit that's a lot harder, I think, than some of the other teams. If the Pittsburgh Steelers had come out on the field and five or six guys had taken a knee, if anything had happened other than the entire team taking a knee, then most of the fans would have been, you know, disappointed, but they still would have their allegiance to the team intact. You know, the, the one thing about watching football, no one just, well, I guess some people just watch football, but most people who are the fans invest themselves in a team, you know? I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I buy the clothes. Why am I dressing up like I'm employed by the Pittsburgh Steelers? Like, you know, you're, we're, we're doing this kind of advanced, all of us fans are doing this advanced sort of expensive cosplay that we can do at work, that we can do in our normal lives. You know, I, we, we wear Pittsburgh Steelers stuff. On some level, real or imagined, we have picked a team that we can identify with. We feel like the qualities of that team are qualities that we share, again, real or imagined, and that's our team. We're part of that team. And Pittsburgh was set up really to be really kind of bulletproof from this because if they had gone out, everyone who's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan who expects them to stand before the flag and put their hand over their heart, We'll be able to say, yes, well, you know, sure, you know, Le'Veon Bell or Antonio Brown is doing this, but they must have some political pressure to do that. We'll let that go. But we still have Alejandro Villanueva staying there, and he's a Bronze Star recipient. We're still the most patriotic team on the field. And he still even kind of had that before, you know, Alejandro's apology. But more on that later. But what happened is that the decision was made that as a team, they would not go out in front of the flag. They stayed inside, which was boycotting the flag, and then they said, oh no, we didn't boycott the flag, we just stayed inside. Which is kind of like when you walk into the kitchen and, and your kid is 
got his hands in the cookie jar and chocolate all over his face. And you say, are you eating the cookies? And he says, no, I'm just chewing them and swallowing them. Whether you boycott the flag because you hate the flag or because you are afraid of not looking like you might hate the flag or looking like you do love the flag. Man, I can't even make that make sense. The perception is if you stay in, it's a boycott. End of story. For whatever your reasoning is behind doing that, well, people may or may not care. Largely, people aren't going to care why you're boycotting the flag. Uh, they're just, they expect you to show up and do the right thing. And again, that goes on uh, on both sides there. There's no way to win for the Pittsburgh Steelers if they want to make everyone happy. Should the people who expect you to disrespect the flag are going to be just as disappointed with you as the people who expect you to respect the flag if you stay in and do nothing. So this comes down to a be true to self sort of thing. But the really big thing here is they did it as a team, together. All of them except Villanueva, who then apologized when he went back in with the team. And that means that all those Pittsburgh Steelers fans who expected them to stand before the flag, you know, stand for the, the national anthem and show respect, now have identified themselves with a team that's doing the opposite of some of their most deeply held beliefs. If you wear black and gold with a Steelers emblem, now that means you hate the country. Or you hate police. Or you're simply a leftist, perhaps. That's what your perception is. If you're one of the people who wanted a protest, well, then you're probably thinking they're a bunch of cowards because they didn't have the courage to protest. No one wants to wear that shirt. Now, the sad truth of all this is that there are certainly Steelers on both sides of this equation. There has to be because they couldn't come up with a consensus. That's why they stayed inside. So in theory, every fan could say, well, I support the Steelers because of this player or that player. Uh, you know, players that are, you know, pro-flag, anti-flag for whatever reason. If they are just anti-Trump because of Trump's comments, no one's going to tell me I can't do something, so I'm going to do it which is a little bit of a kind of a six-year-old move right there. But I mean, hey, listen, whatever works for you. Um, you could find someone to support. But right now, the team as a whole has been painted with an image that people cannot support as a whole. They're not going to want to go through and defend well, I'm wearing a Pittsburgh Steelers shirt because I support the flag, but I'll bet you there's a whole bunch of them that support the flag. But that coach of theirs wouldn't let them come out because he likes Hillary Clinton. I mean, you don't, he wants to have this conversation. Now, if you're on the Colin Kaepernick side of the equation, well, then they weren't courageous enough and you're not gonna wanna wear the gear. Now, if you're watching the video at all, as you see me repainting the cars, you'll notice that I keep one car black and yellow. And that's the ruiner. I felt it was too ironic. This was a car that I found on the street painted this way. I did not do this up in Steelers colors. And I, I felt that because it was an original paint job, I had to keep it. So what I did was I drove it down to my, uh, basically my most inconvenient garage. And <laughs> I just stuck it there till for a day that I hope comes where all this gets sorted out and we can just enjoy football again. Because you know the truth of the matter is, with all this politics now infused into football, um, it's basically gone the way of Hollywood, where people are tuning out. I mean, you know, nobody's watching any of these awards the magic touch. Um, A lot of them probably aren't watching late night TV. You do, unless, unless you're in a mood for politics, if you're in a mood to say, oh, well, here we are with the next level of politics, um, you're not going to watch. And football is one of those wonderful things where no matter how bad things are going, you could tune out for a few hours and escape and watch something really intense and, and gripping that you wouldn't, you could distract you from everything that's going on. You didn't have to think about the division in the country, which has always been there. I mean, there's always been some kind of division one way or another. We don't all agree on everything. That's the thing about being American is you don't have to agree on everything. We vote for stuff and that's how we make decisions. All right, some of those people are gonna be on the losing side and they're not gonna disagree, but hey, we move forward. You know, it's not you know, a totalitarian state with one opinion. It's a good thing. I think we all agree, as long as you're not a Christian baker, you have the right to express yourself in any way, shape, or form in this country, as long as it doesn't physically harm someone. 
And that's why I'm not calling for like a boycott of the NFL or anything like that. Because in the end result, what's going to happen, okay, is it's going to happen naturally. People don't want to watch political protests. That's why there's not a political protest channel. It's not something people want to watch. But what is happening is people are going to look at this and say, you know what, I had one thing I was looking forward to this week was sitting down on Sunday, eating some wings and watching football and letting all the problems of the world and my own problems and whatever else is going on in my head shut up for a while so I could just focus on football. I don't need to spend that three hours trying to figure out if my team hates America. So now they'll go watch NASCAR or you know, the lingerie football league. I don't even know where to watch the lingerie football league. What channel is that on? Which really on a whole other topic. I mean, that's, that is an obvious exploitation of women, but really and truly, if you really think about it, football is an obvious exploitation of men. I mean, we're, we're putting men out there like gladiators beating the crap out of each other and they could end up with brain injuries that cause them to kill themselves. I mean, it really is. There's a whole lot of moral kind of things that are going on with football too that we don't normally think about because it's the circus, it's the, it's, the, it's the Coliseum, it's something that we just give ourselves to for three hours. You can argue whether that's good or bad or indifferent on a whole other video that I'm probably not gonna make. But people are gonna do other things. They're gonna go golfing, you know. Personally, uh, this Sunday, which is, you know, Steelers Ravens, which normally I would block that time out. Uh, no questions asked. This is gonna be, that's how I was gonna be spending the day. No, I'm going up to um, the church where I got married is having a, uh, a nice little turkey dinner kind of thing. You know, their Thanksgiving fall festival sort of. And you realize it's just coming up to October, but this is when they have it. They're having their fall festival as a fundraiser. We're gonna go support them and have a nice day. Have, you know, shop around a little bit. They have like a little flea market that kind of goes on there and arts and crafts you can buy. It's really pleasant. I won't be watching the game because I just don't want to deal with it. Am I going to send all my Steelers clothes to Goodwill? No, that's like a quarter of my wardrobe. I really can't do that. It's just not a, a financial option. But am I going to wear them out in public? No, 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 you can't. You just don't want to have to answer. You don't want people come up to you on the street saying, hey, how come you're wearing that? What, don't you love America? I mean, you'll have this. It's going to happen. It's really kind of a fascinating thing, but when you when you uh, connect yourself to a team and they do something embarrassing, well then you're embarrassed too. It's, it's a humiliating thing and it's a, it's a funny thing. So now people are just gonna disconnect themselves from the team, that's just how that is. Now there's some people who will say, listen, football is my number one thing and that's why I'm, I'm gonna be loyal to this team you know, no matter what happens. Okay, well then hey, then that's where your priorities are. And, you know, if you don't have a sensitivity to everything else that's going on, well, God bless you. That's a great thing. Me, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to have to think about this. This is going to be the last time I bring this up, most likely, unless something really bizarre happens. Um, because really, it's not even all that pertinent to GTA. It's just, I'm, I'm repainting all my cars here. You can see what's going on. Will you see videos with the black and yellow cars in the future? Oh yeah, I've got so much, uh, so much footage that I haven't gone through yet and then voiced over. There'll be certainly something down the road where you'll see them again. And who knows, maybe if once all of this kind of blows over, we'll be, I'll be able to, to repaint stuff and be, you know, a Steelers fan in game again. Although I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna take the risk. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that, that sort of risk again with them. Long after I'm putting my, my Steelers t-shirts back on, I'll probably still leave my cars painted different colors. And it gives me a little bit of freedom too. I can, you know, I'm looking at, you know, the garage at the end of this. And I'm like, you know, I'm not sure that I like all the paint jobs here. They're, they're different. I changed them. They're experiments. Might be a little muddy. We're going to see if we can brighten some stuff up possibly down the road. So keep an eye out for future videos of, you know, freshly painted cars. We're going to keep things interesting as possible. And on that note, and I'm again, once again, I have no idea where this is falling in the video, whether it's wrapped around on itself again, or if it's, uh, it's got 20 more minutes of car pain to go on, I don't know. But as far as the voiceover is uh, concerned, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night.
That's some handiwork. What you looking for? Look, it's sharp.
Hey, it's your dear friend Simeon. Give me a call sometime if you need some work. Here for the magic touch? 